Okay, so let's check out this process using the tool. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously grab our valve seat here and then the shims themselves go underneath. So we're going to start with the uh, 30 thousandths shim, which is here. Place that underneath your seat and then slide it over the valve guide there. Then next you'll take the tool with the seat, or I'm sorry, with the retainer on top, slide that over, set that down. Sometimes it helps if you have a pin magnet. So we'll pull the valve up and using our locks here, set that down in there. Now, what we're looking for is between uh, 1.7 and 1.72. And that's all based on the cam spec and what, what's recommended. So if you have a spring height that is um, too, too, too high, um, then, then it's going to cause the spring to be too tight. And that can cause an issue there. If you have it too low, then you can have it too loose. And what you're going to get with those is you're going to get it running into coil bind or valve float. So you want to find that perfect spec right in the middle. So what we're going to do, and it might be kind of difficult to see, but um, on the tool, and I'll show you afterwards a little bit more in detail, um, there are numbers on here. This is one inch all the way down, and then as you spin it around each time, it goes up uh, one-tenth. So we're looking for, um, like, like I said, 1.7 to 1.72. So all you do is you hold it here, and this thing's really nice and easy to use. I'm going to turn it this way so I can see. So there's one time around, so we're at one, one five, one six. And there's one seven, and I'm just barely getting to one seven. Um, I had to turn it a little tight to get it to go to one seven. So I would say at that point. It's it's close to spec, but it's a little it's a little tight on what I want to do. So take it apart, and it's pretty easy. It's it's a little tedious, but it's a pretty easy job. Take the seat back out. Take this out. So this was thirty. We didn't have enough. So let's try fifteen under it. So again, put that underneath. Tool on. Make sure that's sitting in there right. Grab your keepers. Get those in there. Oop. Before that drops back down. Pin magnet. Definitely way to go. Okay. So I'll turn around again and let's see what we have. So there's one, two times around. So we're coming up on seven. So there's seven. There's seven, one, seven, two. So now. We've gone too far. Now we're looking at 730. So we don't have so that tells us we don't have enough shim in there. So at this point, you kind of have to we're right we're right in between. With 30, we're at the bottom. With 15, we're up. Now I only have 15, 30s, and 60s, uh thousands on the shims. So having done this a couple times, sometimes you can kind of move pieces around, use different shims, you know. They may all say they're the exact same, but they're not. So, I mean, in theory, 215 should be the same as that 30. But why don't we try 215 shims and see what that gets us. So we'll put that back down. Again, you're just repeating the process every time until you get into that window. Okay. So let's try it again. Five. Six, there's seven, seven, ten, and we start to tighten up. It's a right about seven fifteen. So that's much more in the window um, of where I would prefer to be. So once you get that done, again, you got to take this off, pull the tool out. Now, crucial step you definitely want to make sure you don't skip putting the valve seal on. I've done it before, got ahead of myself, got that all figured out. Next thing I know, I'm jumping straight over to 
putting the valve seal on, I'm sorry, putting the spring on, and <laughs> completely skip putting a seal on. So the other tool I want to show you is the install. Um, I've used sockets before in the past, like an 11 millimeter. It works okay, but it doesn't fit perfectly on there. And I, the last thing you want to do is damage one of these seals. So there is a little spring you can see on here that holds this. So I always take the spring off just so I don't damage it. They're easy to take on and off. Um, this is actually just for demonstration. This is a used one, so I'm going to take this back off. But it already has a little oil in it. Sometimes I like to put a little oil there. Slide that over the valve. And then the other tool. It's pretty basic. There's not much to it. Got this piece here, which all this does is just screws into the head like so you don't even have to go crazy with it and then this machined piece here and so all it is is you can see there's an opening in the bottom which fits over the valve and the valve seal and it it's it's machined there's a step in there to really fit on it so that just slides over there and then all you have to do you know take your favorite screwdriver yeah and see I even put that in too far there you don't even need to go that far with it slide that over and as you pull up on the screwdriver pushes right down on the valve. I think it went so fast that I didn't even realize it went on. Again, that was a used valve, valve seal, so it probably already opened up a little bit. Unscrew that, pull this tool off. Now your valve seal is down. Take the little spring, pop it over. I'll just push it on all the way around. Boom. And now from that point, you can go ahead and just drop your spring on. Pop here retainer use your tool press the spring and hit it with the uh, keepers and there you go keep moving on down so uh, th these springs that are on here are the standard dual springs from BTR and when I was using these heads on a stock bottom end um, I wasn't planning to go too high with the RPMs but um, <clears throat> with this motor we'll definitely be turning it over 8,000 um, got the Johnson lifters in there um, push rods, uh, everything, you know, really to be ready for that, uh, trunnions, and et cetera. So we'll be running the ultimate RPM springs here. So that's what I'm doing with this conversion. But I just wanted to show you guys real quick um, these two really cool tools from BTR to really help, um, you know, this whole process. And I want to show you guys real quick with the spring height tool if that zooms in for us. Yeah, it's really neat. It says BTR there. But, yeah, um, as you open this up, you can see the markings maybe yeah there we go so as you turn this every time it comes around so now we've got six and then it's marked there so that would be 1.61 1.62 so on and so forth so the spec that we're looking for for this setup is that height that's 1.70 up to 20 and on the one we did we ended up right about here 15 or 16 so anyways that's the tool it's got really easy to grab it with your hand, fits in there nice. Highly recommend this um, if you're shimming your springs. So that's about it. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'll put some links down in the description to these tools. And if you have any questions, be sure to comment below and I'll answer them for you. Thanks a lot.